Hello, my name is Emilia Gomez. I'm very happy to, to be here with you virtually at the Sano Music Computing Conference. I will give a keynote speech on the Trompa project. Uh, Trompa stands for Towards Richer Online Music Public Domain Archives. And it's an European project that has involved different uh, research and music institutions uh, during the last uh, three years. Before talking about the Trompa project, I will explain the main motivations, which were driven by a previous project, Phoenix, where we try to enrich uh, music concerts of classical music by providing information that could be accessed uh, on the concert before, during and after a concert. This was the link to a product by Royal Concert Val, uh, Orchestra in Amsterdam called the RCO Editions. And I would like to show you a video of this product. The Royal Concertgebouw Orchestra is proud to present RCO Editions, a unique video magazine for your iPad, packed with recordings of stirring concerts, expert commentary, inspiring articles and video clips. Download the free app for instant access into the world of the Royal Concertgebouw Orchestra from the comfort of your own home. RCO Editions. Feel it at home. As I mentioned before, in Phoenix, we wanted to provide enriched information about the musical concert, for instance, around a symphonic musical piece that could be accessed before, during and after the concert. This information includes, for instance, the musical score, performances of the piece, information provided by experts, and also information uh, extracted automatically using music description techniques dealing with audio or with score information. The Phoenix project followed what we call uh, a tradition enrichment tool, which you can see illustrated here from the left to the right. In the left, you see there is a, we start from a repertoire which needs to be digitalized, for instance, musical score that needs to be converted into digital format and also needs to be annotated. We can also integrate uh, digitized and curated resources related to this musical piece that is available, for instance, in the internet. The first step of the enrichment tool is to incorporate manual or human expert annotation and curation to this uh, data or musical data. After that, we also combine this manual annotation with automated processing using state-of-the-art music description uh, techniques. With this combination of human annotated processing, we generate enriched information or around the musical piece that users can access through a single-end user application. As you have seen, in this case, it was an iPad app. We found out that this approach was providing meaningful information about musical pieces to the end users. However, it was not scalable. There were four main points that we identified, which were, or which were the main motivation for the Tropa project. The first one was the lack of good quality digital music data. For instance, it's very complicated to get high quality digitized music score of symphonic pieces. The second motivation and limitation of this approach was the limited accuracy or performance of state-of-the-art technologies to deal with classical music, for instance, with symphonic music or with uh, a cappella singing. The third motivation and limitation was that the human annotation required, for instance, to annotate a symphonic piece was very expensive, through it was not possible to, to do it on a large scale. And finally, the derived data that we generate, the enriched data, was not accessible further, so the usability was limited. These are the four main motivations that we tried to address in the Trompa project. Trompa which stands for Toward Richards Online Music Public Domain Archives, is an European consortium made by the different institutions that you see on the screen. We have communities of musicologists, institutions that deal with music, for instance, we have orchestra, technological partners such as uh, TU Delft or Pompeu Fabri University, and also SMEs or small medium enterprises such as Voctra Labs or Video Doc. We have also uh, uh, music users and also musical uh, somehow institutions such as uh, uh, Vienna uh, Musical University 
and also Goldsmith uh, in London. And finally, content owners, those that own music performances or scores such as uh, orchestra or, uh, or also archives. With all different institutions, we try to address the four limitations that I mentioned before by the following vision. This vision is the one that I would try to explain in my talk. If you see at the top, we start by getting advantage of existing public domain music archives and different repertoires that can be uh, located in different uh, places and different formats. For instance, we, we consider digitized created resources, repertoire that needs to be digitized and annotated, data that is in the hands of content owners, uh, such as scores or uh, digital annota or annotations and also digitized and created resources that we can find on the web. Our goal is to connect this uh, public domain music data with communities to be able uh, to enrich uh, this through a set of applications that address different audiences. We combine as in traditional approaches, manual annotation with technologies, but we applied principles from crowdsourcing and citizen science to make this crowd annotation and automatic processing collaborate, as we, as we, uh, I will explain in the following slides. Let's start by explaining our vision. We have tried to address users following a user-centered approach. We try to identify music communities and see which are the interests for data, for music data. How can they contribute to the enrichment end of this data? and which is the incentive for them to contribute? How can they enjoy this data and technologies in a set of applications? These are the five different communities we have uh, addressed. The Trompa project has focused on amateur uh, mus musicians or music lovers. Started uh, from, the, from the left to the right, our communities are music scholars, piano players, choir singers, orchestra musicians, and finally, music enthusiasts. Following this user-centered approach that I mentioned below, we had to define which are the interests of these different communities in data. For instance, we see the music scholars, piano players and choirs that are interested in accessing musical scores. Also, for instance, musical piano players and choir singers might also want to access performances of those scores. Orchestras are interested uh, also in the digitization of scores and music enthusiasts mainly focus more on audio recordings. So we have tried to narrow down a bit the interest in data. In terms of technology, we have identified which other technologies enjoyable by different audiences. For instance, music scholars might want to use technology to share their perspective, perspectives um, uh, on the music and their own analysis. Piano players or choirs might be interested on, on technologies for the assessment of the performance or for the alignment of the performance with the, with the score. This has been widely used uh, also in the widely found application in the literature. Also for choirs, we saw the need to sonify musical scores, to synthesize them so that the choir singers can listen to the different parts and can rehearse by listening, which is a common practice in amateur choirs. We also found the need for Oscar trust to digitize scores and, uh, and finally for music enthusiasts, we focused on the concept of music and emotion because it's a concept that can be widely accessible for any audience and music recommendation, which is a well-known application. Finally, we identify um, how users would like to contribute to enrich uh, system music data. For instance, music scholars or uh, or orchestra players might want to add annotations, might, might be willing and, and, and suited to add annotations, expert annotations on, on musical scores. Players and choir singers uh, can contribute with their rehearsal practice information and also the performance annotations, how to sing a piece or how to play it. And finally, enthusiasts can provide their perspectives on the emotions they perceive from music. We carried out these requirements by means of a set of qualitative and quantitative methodologies in the project, following, for instance, approaches such as surveys, focus groups, or workshops with those audiences. 
Once we have identified which are the needs and of, the, of the users and the communities, we combined two main blocks for music enrichment. One is automated processing, so automatic description of music data, and the second one is crowdsourcing strategies. I will just uh, summarize our approach uh, for automated processing. This is what we call machine intelligence in a project. That means that uh, machines uh, can automatize some of the descriptive process, and that has been a long research challenge for the sound of music computing literature, how to extract meaningful information for users from recordings or from music scores. In our project, we have contributed to advanced music information retrieval technologies or music description technologies and processing technologies uh, uh, for the particular uh, repertoire of our communities, such as, for instance, uh, choir singing recordings, which is one of our communities, or the description of emotions, and uh, from, from songs, which is uh, related to music enthusiasts. We have seen the need uh, to develop algorithms and to consider that state-of-the-art algorithms have, have been driven now by data. And we need to, to, to create also data sets that are representative from our particular repertoire. In terms of uh, this uh, automatic description, we have addressed, for instance, the limitations uh, of uh, technologies for classical music given their acoustic and musical complexity, such as choir singing, description, separation, or synthesis techniques. We have also addressed the digitization of orchestra scores and the conversion from image to, to digital scores, and also the description of expressive piano performances. And we have contributed to the creation of specific data sets for training machine learning models. This is a summary of the kind of computational tasks that we have addressed in a project. You can find the details also in our web page and also some specific publications that our consortium is publishing in, a, for instance, in, in, in this conference and other conferences in the field. In terms of automatic description of music, you see we have addressed the task of uh, the estimation of music and emotion in the context of different repertoire. We have addressed also music performance rating in terms of pitch timing and dynamics. As mentioned before, we have analyzed uh, score information in, in visual format to the, for digitization, and we have also contributed to state-of-the-art audio to score alignment techniques. Instead of synthesis, uh, the Trompa project has mainly focused on the sonification and synthesis of choir singing scores, uh, and also on the separation uh, of choir singing performances. Just as an example of the algorithms that we have developed, I will play a sound uh, of the research by Bonad and Blau that, uh, that it tries to address the natural and expressive synthesis of choir singing. <laughs> Let's now focus on the second main component of a project, which is crowd annotation. In Trompa, we take the best of human intelligence and with the goal of involving the crowd at varying expertise levels, from musical experts to music enthusiasts, in unlocking knowledge and expressing their own perspectives on music material. Our goal is to exploit crowd labeling data for algorithm improvement using system techniques for active learning, for machine learning, so that crowd and algorithms work together to enrich music artifacts. For that, we need to incentivate audiences to contribute to algorithm development and to contribute to the enrichment of data. Because as we mentioned before for the Phoenix project, this is a time-consuming task and it's very, very difficult and very, very expensive to do it in a large scale. In Trompa, we have explored the engagement with experts, users or volunteers 
from five different communities, which I mentioned before, for different contribution to actions. For instance, they can annotate, comment or validate for the annotations for in, in related to target computational tasks that we introduced before, for instance, the emotions in music, the transcription of scores to convert them to uh, digital format, the annotation of the difficulty of playing a piano piece or singing a quiet part. For that, we need to understand very well uh, different factors uh, related to or linked to the user, such as personal characteristics, environmental factors, community goals, and how to, to incentivize the participation. We mainly, in Trumpa, we mainly focus on incentivizing audiences uh, to offering support tools that can support their musical practice, that can support their learning, their access, digital access, or can support their listening experiences. What we want to manage is to have a hybrid human and machine intelligence and hybrid human machine models so that we have algorithms that give their output for quality assessment by the crowd. And this quality assessment is given back to, to the algorithm for feedback. We use techniques such as active learning, for instance, we have also the crowd, which have some input to do quality assessment, and then they, they make their own judgment. And by implementing this mechanism, we have input data, which is enriched in the, in the output. We, uh, in Trompa, we have implemented these uh, hybrid schemes involving the crowd and involving the automatic techniques by uh, implementing a set of usable components that will then be used in different applications. We mainly focus on three uh, reusable components that we have developed during the project, which follow the FAIR principles um, defined for data, which uh, means uh, that the data that should be generated in the project should be findable, accessible, interpretable, and reusable. The three components are those that you see on the screen. First, we have developed what we call the contributor environment, which is a database which uh, integrates distributed data, metadata, and outputs from human uh, annotations and also from machine intelligence, from technologies. That means that we integrate at the level of data, not at the level of components. The second component is uh, a set of music description algorithms which can be run on the backend and triggered to any type of data, which we call the Trompa Processing Library. And the third one is a set of components for data and avid and navigation and annotation, where we have focused uh, mostly on the uh, annotation and navigation of musical scores and music recordings. For instance, we have an annotation tool uh, for musical scores. We have a, a component for performance assessment where we can also uh, navigate through performance practice. You will see more in practice in the applications. Those reusable components are here as shown in the picture, have been used in a set of uh, five different applications. Applications are just uh, front-ends uh, that are uh, implemented using uh, web technologies, which we use um, those components and which offer functionalities to five different audiences. In the next minutes now, I will finish the presentation with a, a summary of the five application, end user applications that we have created. And you can see we have tried to to follow this user center approach. We define their needs, we define also the needs in terms of technologies and annotations, we define their needs in terms of components, and now we, I will uh, illustrate you with the final uh, pilots that we have created during the project for these five different uh, communities. The Trompa pilot for music scholars has been led by Professor Tim Crawford and his team from Gosmith in London. We have explored as an added value that this pilot should support uh, an innovative musicological research progresses. You see here screenshots. We have tried to offer in our application functionalities for the, the annotation, collaborative annotation of digital scores using the music and coding initiatives MRI format, and we have contributed them to the development of this initiative. The annotations that can be shared include textual annotations or links to external media. And the Trompa project has focused on two main repertoire. The first one are tempo and expression marks in Malice for Symphony, thanks to a collaboration with Dr. Paul Banks, and the second one is the early vocal music repertoire. 
The second pilot of the Trompa project has been led by Dr. David Weigel and Dr. Werner Goebel from Vienna University of Music and Performing Arts. This uh, pilot is called CLARA, which stands for Companion for Long-Term Anal Analysis of Rehearsals Attempts, which is a tool for rehearsal progress in piano performance. We have integrated in this application technologies to capture, gather and compare rehearsal recording, for instance, by offering alignment of rehearsals, audio and video, and with digital scores, and also allowing visualizations of performance aspects such as tempo against the musical score. The other value of our applications is that it provides a performance with insights on performance, on the temporal evolution of the performance practice, and also they provide them with immediate feedback on stylistic and technical aspects. The third pilot has been targeting choir singers, in particular amateur singers, and has been led by the team of uh, Pompeu Fabra University uh, in Barcelona and Botro Labs. The goal of this tool is called Cantamos, and you can see uh, there the, the URL to access it, is to support singers in their choir practice. We have focused on amateur uh, choirs, uh, which in the context of COVID, for instance, they couldn't have physical rehearsals. So this tool offers ways for virtual rehearsals. We have integrated their technologies that can provide singing voice ratings, so singing voice performance analysis to singers. They can rehearse the part and they can also uh, sing and see, uh, you see down uh, here, an, uh, an assessment of the performance. And we have also integrated technologies that we listened before of singing, of choir singing synthesis for score sonification so that for any digital score, they can hear the voice they can also sing along with. The other value that we have offered to choir singers is the access to repertoire in digital form and also to the synthetic uh, pieces. We have offered also technologies uh, to record, analyze uh, their interpretation, and also the possibility that when different singers rehearse on the tool, they can generate them virtual choirs, virtual recordings, as we have uh, synchronized uh, versions. And you can hear an example in this URL of, the, of an example of a virtual choir that we did uh, in collaboration with uh, Cantoria Ensemble. In our orchestra pilot in Trompa, um, which has been led by Dr. Cynthia Lim from TU Delft, also in collaboration with Concert Orchestra and Videodoc, we have uh, we have tried to address the need for orchestras to have access to good quality digital scores. And we have uh, in, in engaged with students and your orchestra based in the Netherlands. In the pilot, we have integrated technologies for the digitization scores and the annotation of scores uh, connecting to public domain music repertoires such as IMLSP. As an uh, example, you, we have uh, run a campaign, a crowdsourcing campaign, to subscribe Beethoven Wind Sex Death of uh, 71. In the final pilot that I will present, we have addressed anyone that likes listening to music, music enthusiasts, by connecting uh, the application with the 16 content uh, uh, owned by one of the partners of the of the Trompa Consortium, which is Stichling Centrale Discotheque. The goal and, and the rationale be between this uh, Trompa uh, pilot, which is uh, which you can find the URL there, is to try to use the crowd to gather and study the so-called ground truth data for machine learning algorithms. In particular, we have addressed the task of music emotion recognition. By means of engaging with the crown, we have also uh, promote the interdisciplinary discussions on the, on the topic of music and emotion. We see our pilot as providing users with added value because we provide educational material on the link between musical properties and emotions as, as studied by music psychology and musicology. And also we reward users with music recommendations according to their, their um, uh, to their uh, annotations and also with personalized models for music emotion recognition. 
As a conclusion, in the Trompa project, we have connected five different music uh, communities with existing public domain archives using the principles of fair data, reusable components, and specific uh, frontends or web frontends. We have approached the combination of human and machine intelligence for the enrichment of music data, uh, addressing the challenges uh, of the, how to incentivate uh, music users and music, uh, music lovers to contribute uh, to data enrichment and addressing also the limitation of state-of-the-art technologies, for instance, to address a particular repertoire. During our project, we has uh, covered the last three years, we have seen that COVID pandemic has emphasized also the need for uh, providing uh, digital resources and digital uh, tools for musical practice as complementary to physical ones. And we have also seen the need for much more research which address this human and machine intelligence, how to make the best of both, and also to analyze the impact that music technologies can have in our experiences and in our way of, uh, of practicing music or enjoying music. Thanks a lot for your time, for listening to this video. I hope we will see you in person soon. You can find in our website uh, the list of scientific publications related to Trompa, some also project derivatives which are public that you can browse and uh, you can see also some of the campaigns that we have run with communities in our Twitter account and feel free to contact me if you have any question or suggestion in our project. Thanks a lot and enjoy the conference.